all right what is up everybody i am back with another video where we are currently making our npcs spawner npc spawner actors for our co-op game so let's just keep going um in the last video we set this up but we had some snipping in so i just fixed fixed it quickly so you can see the AI are now dissolving in. How to do that is we go to our dissolve manager. I didn't do it on video because I wanted to test so that it actually worked and not waste people's time. But this is what we have before. I just renamed it, but it was start dissolve and dissolve tick. So I renamed the first one we had to start dissolve out, which is the one we use when we die. And dissolve forward tick, which is this one. The previous one. So on the start, we set it to zero. Everything else is the same here. Then I just copied all of this, paste it in. And this one will be called start dissolve in. Uh, it will be bound to an event called dissolve backwards tick. So bound here. And on this one, we reverse the values. So this one is greater than one. So this one will be less than one. We stop the timer. And this one, as before, we are adding the, this, uh, this number to the solve project progress, and here we are subtracting this number from the solve progress instead. And on the start dissolve in, we just start by setting the dissolve value to one, so it's completely transparent when it starts. And you can see it seems to work pretty well. I do feel like I should, it's working a bit too well. I do feel like it should uh, first like quickly give us the characters um, before it starts dissolving them. It works. Uh, so there's, it might be that it doesn't work this well in package. We will see, but for now, let's keep this. So that's just an easy, yeah, and also in the master MPC, I just on begin play. So whenever they spawn, they just start dissolving. Actually, they could be only needed on the server. Actually, it might be good to do it on everything. Maybe that's why it works so well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's not do a authority node here. Actually, so I don't even need to do the multicast for the start. Can see what happens here. Let's do that instead. Save some bandwidth and for now, if we did this somewhere else and begin play, then we would need to multicast it. But this is gonna trigger, and everyone, all of the clients are gonna have their own timeline for this instead. Or this is gonna happen on each client, that's why it's working so well in this case. So yeah, let's just keep it like that. Mm. I'm gonna comment this one out. Uh, 
obviously not. Um, what's it called? Not snap to not uh, pop. Comment there. Just leaving some comments so we know it's pretty much working and it's looking good. Let's go back into our MPC spawner. Um, we can delete all of these. Start spawning MPCs when player enters collision. Needs some kind of shake for check to make sure it's a player entering because right now this will trigger from npcs entering another spawner as well uh, local to world transforms mm -mm -mm. looking good Remove last used indexes so they don't get used again. Just some quick notes. Mm. All right, that's probably fine for that. Uh, there was something else I was gonna do. Let's go into our Structure NPC details. I will add a another variable. Mm. Any montage soft object reference. This will be aggro animation. A lot of games do that i think it looks pretty good so either you have some kind of like spawn animation for zombies this could be like coming up off the ground uh, a lot of games do this as well uh, when you have for instance this npc over here is roaming and instead of him just turning to us to attack him he would have some kind of like indication animation that he's now being aggroed like a shout or something uh, so let's add that mm.
So what do we have? Current Embassy States. Roaming, chasing, attacking. Okay, so if there's no player in range, he will start to roam again. And if it is So in this one, if current and Get current embassy state equal to every zero point five seconds. I'm a bit confused about how I set this up. I guess it's fine. We'll see if it works or not. If we are currently roaming, so that would be the first time. We would do another function. Play aggro animation. Play aggro animation. And then we're gonna go back here. Mm. Multiplay montage. Get owning character, get NPC details, hmm, oh okay, we actually need to do this as a event. Set. I might be a bit overboard with this sync stuff. Mm, cast to any montage. Because we're using soft references in the NPC spawner, right? And as long as I don't play, uh, put NPCs in the world, stuff won't get loaded into memory. Um, but we might as well do soft references wherever we can, wherever possible. 
So this means this aggro animation is not loaded into memory until it's actually actually used in this case. Why can't I comment? Okay, apparently I'm not allowed to comment. And then we're going to go to our data table. And I think I have some animation for it in here. So this is a taunt animation from MixML that we can use. This is the correct one. I'm gonna create any montage. Bring this into the MPC details and let's see if that works. Does not look like it worked. I'm wondering if it's because the skeleton is not the same. It looks like it is though. It should. Okay. The guy over there is clearly not. Yeah, okay, so it is working. Um, is working and probably I'm not sure this has root motion it doesn't have root motion no so they are sliding a bit while they're aggroing that's fine it's all placeholder stuff you have to add your own things to it uh, Maybe a slow ass zombie wouldn't have this um, aggressive aggro animation. And then go into this weird walking. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be it for this. That's fine. You get the point. I'm not sure I will use it, but it's in there if you want it. There is some fixing up to do, because uh, you can see he didn't die there because it was in another animation. So I'm going to fix that in the next video. I will see you then. Bye.